In this video, I'm doing an update on some of the plants that I've featured on previous videos, show you what they look like now, sometimes months, if not years later, and hopefully uh, answer any questions that you may have about these plants. One of my most asked questions was about my fiddle leaf fig where I chopped the top off of it and also used cloning paste to try and encourage branching. Um, so here it is. I chopped the top of this tree in November 2022. So it is now January 2024. As you can see, it ended up, here's where I cut it. It ended up growing multiple branches. Some um, came from where I put the cloning paste. Some popped out on their own and it ended up growing one, two, three, four, five new branches. And there's some other little bits that I thought were going to become branches. Um, never ended up actually um, growing branches, but Yes, chopping the top of your fiddle leaf fig indeed uh, is a successful endeavor. However, um, I do have an update on when I did chop the top off, I did put the top into water in the hopes that I could propagate a new tree. And um, well, to tell you the truth, it failed. And now I think part of the reason it failed, I um, cut this tree like a few days before I ended up going on vacation. So I was gone for the following week after cutting it uh, and we ended up getting a heat wave. So the branch, I had put it in a jar of water and put it down here. Now this is out, this tree lives on a sunny patio. We are in Southern California. I did the chop in November, which I think that was my first mistake because even though we do get pretty mild weather, we do have seasons and um, that's not like the perfect growing time for a tree. It's not the best time to encourage growing. Um, and then we had an unseasonable uh, heat wave and then it got very cold and very wet in the early winter of 2023 we had a lot of atmospheric rivers. So honestly, if I was to do it again, um, I think what I would do is chop the tree in probably around earlier spring, like maybe February, March for my time of year. Um, when you live indoors and you have a controlled climate, that is probably a little bit different, but the winter time, you're always gonna have less sun. And these are trees that want sun. Now, part of the reason I cut the tree is because it was starting to get too tall for my patio and um, cutting it didn't seem to really fix that. So I think my really, my next plan of action for this tree, I am gonna use cloning paste further down here and chop it. I think I might cut some of these branches again. That's probably gonna encourage more branching, but I think I might cut some of these. I might try water propagation just to see if I can make it work. Um, but I think I'm also gonna try air layering and I probably will make a video about that. That's a really effective way to propagate um, most trees where you basically take a section, you fill it with sphagnum moss and a plastic bag and it should start rooting straight on the tree and then you snip it and it's a much more effective way to um, ensure that your propagation survives. So here is this fiddle leaf fig, more or less happy and uh, definitely the branching and the cloning gel definitely works. My other fiddle leaf fig that I did a repotting video about um, and it had some red spots. Um, it was like in a pot that was okay size, but I wanted to put it into this more decorative pot. This one's okay. I'm going to be honest with you, kind of relatively happy. These leaves are looking a little bit yellow, but the main thing is the leaves on top these are looking really healthy. Now, somebody pointed out that the red dots that were featured on the leaves were probably not a fungus, but it was edema, which does happen when these plants get a little bit overwatered. Um, those red dots are gone on the new healthy leaves. These ones are 
like a little bit more on the yellow side. However, I'm not too worried about that. That could be a sign of many things, nutrition deficiency. Um, I think part of it is just they're a little bit older. Um, you know, any tree is gonna lose its bottom leaves. So what I might do with this one, I know it sounds crazy, but I might do a little chop on this one so that it branches out. Right now it's, oh, probably like about four feet tall. So I feel like that would be a nice um, chopping size <laughs> and then try and repropagate this one. But we'll, we'll see, I will keep you posted. And if I do, I would probably end up showing that on a, another video. Another plant I have been asked about uh, that featured in another video was my Apuntia cactus, um, which I replanted in a one of my videos. This is an Opuntia or a prickly pear cactus pad that I found uh, on the ground when I was out running and I grabbed it. This is a variety that has no spikes, but as you can see, it's definitely, um, not only has it taken a root, it's growing another little pad. And yes, it totally needs to be in a bigger pot. That was one of the comments that I got. And, and I totally agree. <laughs> I just haven't replanted it yet. So I have a few other um, Opuntias that I have found um, on the ground and replanted. There's a little teddy bear one. That's a no, no, no touchy cactus. You definitely don't want to touch that. I have a few others. Let's go to my little station over here. These are some other Opuntias that um, I have found and just popped in a pot here. Um, this is actually one of the first ones I ever featured on a TikTok video. Teeny tiny little pad. Um, it started in a smaller pot. These are um, chaparral variety native to California. Um, and they're happy enough here. They probably should go into the ground. And I will actually show you another Opuntia that I'm I may have featured in that video, but I have since planted in the ground and that's where these cactus really wanna be. So I probably would not repot this in a pot. I will probably put this in the ground and I'll, I'll show you how they look. So this is another one of the uh, touchy no-no chaparral uh, Apuntia cactuses uh, that I found on the ground. You can see it's literally laying sideways on the ground and um, it is very happy here. Uh, it's since I planted it, it's grown a third paddle. And then here's another of the same variety. This cactus always fascinated people because it was a lovely heart-shaped cactus. You can't really see the heart anymore. Uh, it was living in a little flower pot that it fully outgrew and it's so much happier here, um, planted straight into the ground. And it's a native Californian, so that's good for my garden. And here's my last little Opuntia that um, may or may not have featured in that video, but it, it was also grown um, from a rescue. I uh, found it fallen down on a hillside near my brother's house, uh, just on the side of the road. There was a little landslide and this was one of the victims. I grabbed it and uh, it is thriving here in my front yard. Now this is my organ pipe cactus. Uh, this was found left outside a neighbor's house as a free plant giveaway. I originally planted this in the soil and um, it's interesting because I did get some comments about, did you not bury it too deep? Is that not gonna cause it to rot? Uh, some people disagreed with the type of cactus that it is, um, that it was in too small of an area. And uh, you know what? And this is the beauty of me saying, I'm not a plant expert and I can make mistakes. I do truly stand by the fact that this is an organ pipe cactus based on the neighbor's garden um, that it originally came from. Um, and it currently is probably in a pot that will eventually be uh, way too small for it because it does tend to pup out a lot. Um, but what ended up happening is it indeed started to rot. It was a lot taller when I first uh, planted it. And um, I noticed some kind of rotting discoloration happening from the bottom. And I think part of it is just, we had so much rain last year in our yard and cactus don't like rain. So it didn't get a chance to establish itself um, before getting a little bit wet. 
So I left it out. I cut off all the rot. I left it out, oh my gosh, for like six months. I left it sideways, which um, I noticed it was probably time to start planting it because it did begin to like start, I don't know if you can see this, it did start growing roots, like as if it was a fallen cactus. That's the beauty of all of these things. They are designed to fall over and re-root themselves. So I planted it in this pot and so far, so good. It seems pretty happy. It's a lovely green color. There's no um, sign of rot that I can see so far anyways, um, but that is that update. Here is a Kalanchoe that I featured in another video. It was getting really straggly and overgrown and I chopped it up and I replanted it and um, it's pretty happy here. Now the thing about Kalanchoe, um, this one is blooming and they are technically a plant that does death bloom. So that was one thing about the branches that were featured in the video that had this. Um, all those branches were kind of flowering and they were kind of um, death blooms. And a lot of those original branches that I chopped uh, ended up dying back. However, um, it had enough um, either little baby plants or other things that uh, it came back thriving and it is pretty happy here and it's a really pretty plant um, it gets more kind of reddish pink purple with the more um, exposure to sun it gets you can see the front of this gets more sun than the back but um, really pretty easygoing plant and um, even the the leaves they're not doing it right now but they do um, create it's also known as mother of thousands because the leaves do um, create other little new baby plants and I just kind of threw them in here and you can see them thriving. Another plant rescue that I featured and I showed the update of this plant before. This is a agave perii, I believe is the name. This is one of two that I found on the ground of the college campus that I worked at and it was pretty much as good as dead um, if it was like run over and left on the side of the road. This one's looking pretty happy. It's ready to go in the ground and the other one is in the ground and I'll show you how it's looking now. Now over here is where it's planted in the soil. If you saw what this looked like when I first picked it off the ground. It was pretty much as good as dead, but now it's looking pretty good. On my front porch, I have two rescue plants uh, featured in previous videos. This is my Euphorbia poinsettia. And um, I don't know if you recall, I chopped this down way back, um, you know, it was like right after Christmas, so almost exactly a year ago. It's January 2024 now. It was January 2023 when I started chopping this back. You can see where the cuts were and then where the new plant popped out. Um, and it has indeed gone red. Now, don't get me wrong. It is not as showy as something that you would buy in the shops right before Christmas, but considering um, this is something that I get to now enjoy, um, season after season, um, I'm really happy with it. And probably if I had been a little bit more efficient about putting it in the dark <laughs> um, to force those blooms, um, I would have got it because they're not actually blooming yet. Um, these, as discussed in that video, these are actually um, a type of leaf. These aren't the blooms. The blooms have not come out yet, um, but I feel like this is a win. And then, of course, I did multiple videos on my snake plant propagations. You can see where the leaves started from. So this plant started out, I had a bunch of branches that a neighbor had put out. Some were also found um, broken after a storm. And you can see these are the original leaves that I had propagated from. And then all the little pup plants that have come after it. And this is a great plant to have on my shady front porch because it doesn't mind being in the more lower light situation. I also did a little pothos rescue video. This was my pothos that was not looking too good. But from this one pothos, I have really gained a ton. These are all little teeny tiny clippings. This is in perlite. Uh, the sphagnum moss, it's pretty happy in there. They're all um, rooted and growing leaves. And then there's another one back here in water that has rooted. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> but yes, the pothos 
well, it's not as lovely and full as uh, I'd like it to get. The main thing is all these other plants that I got from the one plant. I also did a video on my epiphelium cactus. Um, this plant is really happy. It doesn't really look like it right now at the moment, but it did end up getting a lovely big white night bloom. This is one of them featured from, you know, cuttings that again were laid out by a neighbor and it's kind of created these new kind of interesting blooms. The original leaves looking a little bit worse for wear, but the main thing is that it has all these other happier, healthier leaves that did end up blooming. Up here is the other one. And um, interestingly, this one did not end up blooming after all. It, it showed a little bloom. And I was getting really excited um, and then they ended up falling off. So that ended up not happening, but I do kind of put that down to it had only been repotted recently. So I think that in the next season, we will get some nice blooms off of this plant, but it does have a ton of new growth and it is really happy kind of sitting up here in this hanging pot. Now to finish it off, I'm gonna show you one of the plants uh, that featured in the video that probably is Part of the reason you're here watching this now, I created a video about prop lifting, grabbing broken, fallen leaves off the ground from Home Depot. Um, and I found a big stick of Cordylocaria. And uh, that is now one and two and a half years, one and a half years old. So uh, let's have a look at what that looks like. So here it is now. It uh, It's part of this lovely succulent arrangement pot. This was purchased purchased and these are all uh, clippings that I found and then this is the elephant bush aka portalcaria um, that featured in that video it is completely rooted it's you know happy enough part of this flower pot and uh, doing well so really I have a lot of plants that I have featured in uh, previous videos so let me know if there's something you want me to talk about here on my giant uh ever expanding propagation station and those are my current plant updates if there's a plant that you're curious about that i didn't mention please let me know or if there's a plant you'd love for me to feature or talk about um on my channel i'd love to do that too because i do love interacting with you guys and um it is my favorite part about this youtube community. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram and TikTok. And of course, subscribe.